as you look at the current technicals um, and are addressing the question, okay, does it look like we are still in a bear market? Was this rally that we just saw, you know, not a breakout, but but really just a, you know, a relief rally within a larger bear market? Um, is that the case? Um, if if so, how much lower do you think this thing could go? What what are the technicals telling you right now? Okay, so in mid-June when I made that bear market rally case for the technical reconnects, I, I said very clearly, you do not have a confirmed new bull market until you back solidly and sustained above the 200 MA on the daily and the weekly 50 MA uh, on the S&P, right? Just take those as a basic benchmark. In fact, today I put out a chart, which is also an interesting one. It's the monthly 20 MA on the S&P. You, you've seen many bottoms before. Well, we're... You know, the markets raced right back up, right? Especially during the intervention times between 2008 and 2020. And what you see in those bottoms is, you know, it may drop below the monthly 20 MA and then races back above it. And then on the pullback, it tests it as support and then goes back higher. That's that's kind of a clear signal to say the bottom is in. Okay. In Big bear market rallies, big extended bear market rallies, 2000, 2008. What we've seen on all of, all of these three indicators I just mentioned, you get this initial first flush that takes place maybe over a few months and you get extremely oversold. And then you have that counter bear market rally. And then these previous support points all of a sudden show themselves to be resistance the market fails to recapture them. So when, when people say, you know, in August, people I saw, you know, bull market is back. I said, no, it's not confirmed back until you get over these levels and can defend them. You can have poke overs. And we just had a poke over in August on the monthly 20 MA, which was 42.50. And we went to 43.20 or something like this, right? So we had a poke over, but it's a monthly chart. And guess what? We just dropped hard. And now you're looking, and the month is not over, so I'm not making any predictions here yet, but I'm saying for now, you're looking at a sizable monthly reversal candle, which is exactly what you saw in 2008, which is exactly what you see in 2000. So you got to look at this through a pivot of control. When do we know bulls are really in control? There was a signal chart I've been tracking with clients all summer long. It's NASDAQ, new highs, new lows. And that one was actually stunning because it was as over, I mean, as negative as we've seen it uh, during 2008. I mean, it, it was just screaming red. And I was like, wow, I mean, <laughs> what's happening here? Yet we're not really down. I mean, we're down 30%, don't get me wrong. That was a sizable move. But in terms of where we were, you know, it was still fairly high. But I looked at the signal and said, yeah, I'm not shorting this. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm going to get my face ripped off. Yeah. But what this chart showed, and this is really important, and, and I've tracked that, you can see it in 2015, 2016, you can see it in 2008. When it has these big negative readings, you get this counter rally to positive for just a short while. It kind of pokes into positive and over again. And guess what? That's just exactly what happened. Because I, I kept saying to clients, we want to see this positive. We want to see this positive, right? Because that's that's our sign to say, okay, now this this bear market rally is played, and now you have the opportunity or the the possibility that this could roll over. And guess what? August it went right to positive, and bang, it rolled over. So if if that's the analog that plays, then it says yes, we have a chance of a retest of the lows or or new lows, right? So that's, I think the next four, six weeks will tell us that. And of course, we got all these inflation reports. We got the Fed meeting. We got midterms and we we got the, um, you know, the QT quantitative right. type take place. So I, th I think that's that's the negotiation phase right now. Now, if, if we got a rally that gets back above all these MAs that I mentioned and it sustains that, bull market is back. You know, be, be absolutely clear. And I, I know that people will also look at the midterm seasonality chart for presidential elections. It's quite interesting, actually. It's it's played in general in terms of the directional pivots quite well. And it did call for a peak in mid-August. And guess what? We just had a peak in mid-August. 
It also calls for a little bounce into early September, but then it calls for new lows in, in, in later September. And then it calls for a big year-end rally. Now, everybody's on the big year-end rally thing, right? So I, I, I assume at some point around October, so people will try to take a crack at this. The question is obviously then in conjunction, what happens with all the lag effects we've, we've been talking about, how's right. the economy evolving? So that, in my mind, the, the judgment is still out on that, and we don't want to you know, jump the gun on this for sure at this stage. Okay. Yeah. And this is, again, why looking at technicals is so important because, I mean, as you describe that potential trajectory, I mean, I just can't think in my mind, what is a fundamental reason why we should have a, a big end of year rally in these markets when the economy is continuing to contract and we're going to have the lag effect of all the, you know, hit rate hikes and QT and, you know. Well, but yeah, I mean, this, this is a fair question. What is the bull case from here? The sum of the bull case was, you know, Fed's going to pivot. Well, they, they just took that off the table. Exactly. Right? Okay. Okay. So if, if if the pause rates, well, maybe that'll give you a rally, but you still have the lag effects that, that are still going to go through. Are earnings improving? No. You know, as, as the lag effects take hold, growth is going to continue to slow down. There's, go, there's a recession in the UK. There's going to be a recession in Germany. You know, you, you got all these little recession fires blurring up. Uh, so the Fed's not going to bail you out. The monetary supply is shrinking. So what is it? Maybe maybe you get a relief on the dollar because the dollar is sky high, and so you may you may get a reversal on the dollar. Cool. Uh, but look at the two year. Two year got to three point four seven percent today. New high for the year. I don't know if wow. it can sustain. If it, if it can reject, uh, then yeah, that would maybe be positive for a rally. But why would it reject if the Fed is going to 3.84% as they said they would? Right. And if you look historically as to where the two-year is now, it's the highest level since 2007. Hello, folks. We, we, we ran up to 125% debt to GDP. We got 25% zombified companies. How How is that? How is that a positive into next year for earnings? If it even doodles around between three and three and a half percent, it's not, you know. So, yes, you can have relief rallies, but to have a fundamental argument for all of a sudden going back to new highs, you know, I see people say, well, it's negative investor position. Okay, but that's that's not a fundamental argument. That's maybe a, a signal argument for a for a rally, you know. But now that we have this new reality of restrictive monetary policy coming, please, I urge you all, rerun your equity valuation models. You know, it, 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 it's, it's not there, you know. And in, inflation rolling over is not a, it, I, if it, it is a good sign, but it's also, you got to understand the reason why it's rolling over because everything's slowing down. So you can't, you, the only way you're going to get into new highs is, is just insane multiple expansion based on nothing. If you enjoyed this video clip, click here to watch another one you should like.